Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to FinTech Valley Vizag and the Spring Conference 2017. We have a stalwart amongst us who will take us through the day. He's an anchor, a columnist, an actor, and a media consultant. He was one of the significant people responsible for the immense growth and success seen at CNBC TV 18 in the past decade and has over 16 years of experience in the industry. Presenting our host for the conference, please put your hands together for Mr. Suresh Venkat. Thank you, thank you for the very warm Vizag welcome. A good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We hope you're all settled in. The time has come for a big, big change. A new dawn arises in the valley. It's time to learn, grow, explore, and seek new opportunities. On behalf of the government of Andhra Pradesh, I welcome you to the FinTech Valley Spring Conference 2016 in the beautiful city of Vishakhapatnam. I know that people from all over the world are here today in Vizag. You're in the midst of a rising star, this city, in the world of FinTech. Vizag is not only home to the FinTech Valley, but is also a beautiful city in itself. Hills on one side, the Bay of Bengal on the other side, the largest shipyard in the country, the busiest port in the country, and if you haven't tried it yet, the best Andhra food in the country. No wonder Vizag has been called the jewel of the East. Vizag has been ranked as the fifth cleanest city in India, but if you drive around or walk around like I did, you'd agree with me that this is the cleanest city in India. Vizag is also amongst the 100 cities chosen to be a smart city of the future, but given the brilliance of the people in this hall today, I think that future is already here today in this room. As many of you know, the FinTech Valley in Vishakhapatnam, or Vizag as we call it, is a self-sustainable global FinTech ecosystem that focuses on converging finance and technology to create large avenues of growth through industry enablers, world-class infrastructure, entrepreneurship, and innovation. This project has been the brainchild of the Honorable Chief Minister Chandra Babu Naidu. Taking from his experience from setting up a high-tech city like Cyberabad, this was a must-do project for him. It comes no surprise that Andhra Pradesh has been the first state to see a fintech valley emerge. Global financial services companies, government and academia come together in this valley to build capacity, to build infrastructure, market access, connectivity, funding channels, and incentive mechanisms to achieve unmatched business goals and successes. Startups, financial institutions, technology vendors, incubators, accelerators, innovation lab, labs, and investors simultaneously contribute to and thrive in this ecosystem all at the speed of business. The state of Andhra Pradesh is growing at an exponential rate when it comes to its economy, trade opportunities, investment propositions, and overall commercial and cultural development. The government of Andhra Pradesh is working towards building and nurturing an ecosystem that is rapidly transforming the face of the city of Vizag. The FinTech Valley Spring Conference 2017 is thus a platform for those from diverse sectors, be it innovation hubs, investors, academic institutions, corporations, startups, incubators, and acceleration hubs. They all come together to witness and be part of a phenomenal change that's set to dawn upon the FinTech Valley. I now quote from a speech made by the Honorable Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, Mr. Chandra Baba Naidu. He says, and I quote, it is very clear that the fourth industrial revolution is going on. The fourth industrial revolution is a deadly combination of technology and the internet of things. Continue quote, in India, two major reforms have been brought in. One is GST and the other is the digital economy. The digital economy is happening everywhere in the world. With technology and the internet of things, there is a heavy focus on fintech. Close quotes. Now for the inaugural ceremony, I'd like to invite our host for the conference, a man who understands technology and its potential like few others. May I invite Mr. J.A. Chaudhary, IT advisor, Government of Andhra Pradesh. Mr. Chaudhary, can we have you on stage? I'd also like to invite our guests of honor to join us on the dais. Ladies and gentlemen, please give them a warm welcome. Mr. Roy Teo, Director, FinTech and Innovation Group, of the Monetary Authority of Singapore. Mr. Utkash Palnitkar, Partner and National Head, IGS Advisory Management, KPMG. Mr. George Inasu, VP Operations, Project Strategy for Fidelity Financial Services. Mr. Puneet Pushkarna, 
of the Indus Entrepreneurs in Singapore, Mr. Jo Seng Hyun Cho, co founder and chairman at the Marvel Stone Group, and last but not the least, Mr. Amar Kavi, FinTech and Blockchain Association of Switzerland. Gentlemen, thank you for, light, for joining us on stage. May I now request our chief guests to take your seats. It's now time for the formal opening of the event, and to do that, we will start on an auspicious note. May I request our chief guest to light the ceremonial lamp. Mr. Chaudhary, everybody, yes, all of you. May I ask you to lead all the chief guests towards the lamp? Thank you, gentlemen. Please do stay with us on stage. May I request you to take your seats? There's a request for a photo op. Thank you, gentlemen. We are now going to hear a few perspectives on India, the economy, and the digital future from our guests of honor. Our first speaker is the host of the FinTech Valley Spring Conference. His key focus is to mobilize investments, create an IT ecosystem, and create jobs in the state of Andhra Pradesh. He was one of the key personalities instrumental in bringing about the IT revolution in Hyderabad. May I invite to the podium the IT advisor and the special chief secretary to the chief minister of Andhra Pradesh, Mr. J. Chaudhary. Mr. Chaudhary. Good morning to all of you. No good morning? Thank you. Our honorable guests, who have come from all over the globe, distinguished delegates, friends from media, ladies and gentlemen. I really want to thank all of you because I believe in a family ecosystem. Unless we have a vibrant ecosystem in the family, we will not be able to achieve particularly the kind of tsunamis which are taking place and likely to take place because of the tectonic shifts which were created by the global disruptions of the new technologies. These disruptions are already disrupting many businesses and many youth in India are worried about 
the disruptions in their life, disruptions for job opportunities. A lot of uncertainties are there because of this uh, tectonic shift which is creating this new tsunamis. Particularly, I would like to mention one of or few of such technology disruptions which have created this tectonic shift in the world today is the cyber security and artificial intelligence. There are many more, but I thought these two, predominantly everybody is talking about it. What is going to happen? My bank account. What is going to happen if somebody is going to hack into my mobile and records everything, whatever I'm talking to, my girlfriend or whoever. And similarly, governments are worried. A lot of sensitive data is there, including our the election database. Somebody can hack into it. Now the elections are going, going on in different states. If somebody can hack into this election database and change the names, it can create a big uh, havoc in the democratic system. Every organization is worried. Every global fintech companies, global banks are worry, worried what is going to happen to, the, to their customer base. Even some of the hospitals, recently it happened, I don't want to mention which country, but they hacked into the hospital network, took away all the patient's information, and they tried to go for a ransomware that unless you give this kind of uh, money, we will not release this data to back to you. Otherwise, all the patients who got the treatment in your hospital, their information will be out, and they're going to sue your hospital. This is one aspect. The other one, artificial intelligence. Though artificial in intelligence is good in a way, that ease of convenience, the lot of new things are happening, productivity enhancement, all that on the positive side, but they're definitely taking away thousands of jobs. Already, people like Bill Gates, Sachin Nadella, may, many luminaries in the technology area itself, they're talking about the taxing the people who are taking away the jobs because of these robots or cobots using the artificial intelligence. Particularly our country with 1.3 billion population, all the youth are coming out of the colleges, institutions, lakhs of people are coming out with the hope that they will get some job. If they see this news, that existing people, they themselves are losing jobs in thousands of people. Large percentages of the people in the manufacturing sector, service sector, every sector is going to be impacted by this automation, artificial intelligence. So a lot of uncertainties are there in the minds of the people. Certainly the, the tectonic shift particularly countries like India, unless we are prepared, otherwise the tsunamis created by this tectonic shift is going to wash away many people, so they have to be prepared. This city, particularly Vishakapatnam, witnessed a big cyclone, which was unheard the last maybe 100, 150 years. The kind of wind speeds and all that devastated the whole city. Thanks to the visionary leader, our honorable chief minister, he was he camped here for nearly one week in the middle of the storm, and saw to that uh, this thing everything is restored in record time. After the tsunami, we were having some discussions. He was telling that we should have a lot of preparedness. We know that the tsunamis keep coming. But if you don't prepare well, a lot of lives will be in danger. A lot of people will lose their properties and things like that. This regular tsunamis. When I joined the government about exactly about one year back, when he asked me to promote the IT industry, he gave me one clue or one uh, innovative idea. Mr. Chaudhary, I know that uh, lot of uh, negative things I'm reading in newspaper about uh, the IT industry is not able to recruit more people. There is a negative growth in terms of employment creation, things like that. I know we are in the difficult times. 
I also keep hearing about this automation taking away many thousands of jobs, existing jobs, and no new jobs are not going to be created. So you need to plan what are those tomorrow's technologies where we can create new opportunities for the youth who are coming out of at least our state on the place, maybe other states can follow so that the whole country are not really worried about the tsunamis which are going to wash away, particularly the future of the youth of India.